All right, hello everybody and welcome back. We're gonna pick up where we left off in our discussion of the deconstruction of a simple ordinary least squares regression model, where we will eventually see how all of the key output and statistics uh, and estimates are generated piece by piece, element by element. Uh, and we'll do it with a simple uh, trivial data set in Excel and match it up with what we see in Stata or what you would get in a full regression output, uh, say in R. So in this case, we're going to be moving on with calculating the predicted value of the dependent variable, the y hat, the predicted value of the error term, or the residual, the u hat, uh, and then the sum of squared residuals. So all stuff that we're going to need uh, to make use of our regression model. So before we jump into that, let's remind ourselves where we left off and we'll pick up with the same information. So in Excel, uh, what you see here in red is going to be the, uh, the raw data, right? So these were just numbers that we made up. So those first three columns is what we started with. And from there, we generated all the information we need, the deviations from the mean, the shared deviations, and the squared deviations for our x and our y variable uh, that we need to calculate the OLS intercept, the B0 hat estimate, and the OLS slope estimate, the B1 hat. And that's what we see down here. Where are we? There we are. And where we ended up last time is just kind of double checking, right? So we dropped that raw data into Stata. So here's the same X and Y. And we ran a simple regression, Y as a function of X. And we get those same coefficients here, the coefficient on X, that slope coefficient negative 15, and the constant or the intercept that 23.77. So now to put that to use, we're going to calculate the model's prediction or the forecast, the so-called y hat values for each of our 10 observations in our example. So just to remind ourselves, when we see that notation, that little hat, that always represents the sample estimated value. So we had the yi, the true values of our dependent variable, and then the yi hat, what our model is predicting for each observation. And that's going to be a function, of course, of our, in this case, our only independent or explanatory variable, our xi. And to show that relationship, we need what we just calculated, the intercept b0 hat and the slope b1 hat. So we have all the ingredients now. Now we just need to do the calculation for that fitted or predicted value of y hat. Before we do that, Let's just get the visual here. So this is the scatter plot of our little example data, y on the y-axis, on the vertical, x on the horizontal axis. That's roughly the best fit line that we would expect to see. And if we just pick an observation, when x is equal to 0.75, what we want to know is what is the predicted value? What is the linear function of that x observation? And that's going to be the height of that best fit line. That's going to be the y hat that we want to calculate. And we just want to do that for every value of x. What is the predicted value of y? So to show those calculations, again, element by element, let's go back over into Excel. And we're going to need to create a new column here. Call it our y hat column. And each observation here is going to be based on the associated level of x and the same slope and intercept values, right? So a couple ways we could do this. We could just plug the numbers in for the slope and intercept. But let's go ahead and use the Excel option here of fixing those cells uh, in our formula. So we go dollar sign column G. So it's always going to be column G. And then we want the intercept always to be row 17. And then we add g16, which is the intercept, I'm sorry, which is the slope term. So always g, always 16. And we multiply that by the associated value of x. For that first observation, it's c2. And what we see is a pretty good approximation. So our model predicted observation 1 would have a value of 19.8. 
the actual value was 20. That's our next step is to figure out how far off we were. But now let's go ahead and copy this formula all the way down so we get all 10 observations of our predicted values. That's all looking pretty good. So like I said, in order to figure out how much value there is in that column of predictions, well, we want to now generate the fitted error term or the residual. So let's remind ourselves what that looks like. So again, when we are predicting something or fitting something within our sample, we use that uh, hat notation. So when we see that UI hat, that's our model's fitted or predicted error term. It's not the data generating process theoretical random error. That's another chapter all unto itself. This is what we can actually see. And it's just going to be the, the distance, the gap between the actual value, what actually happened in our dependent variable, and what we just calculated, that model predicted value, the y hat. So when we visualize this, going back to our little plot, for that observation when x was equal to 0.75, our model predicts a value up here, and here's the actual value here. So the gap between them, the y hat and the actual y, that distance, that's what we're calculating. That's the model error or residual. That's the u hat. Okay, So that's going to be an easy calculation to make here in Excel. So create a new column. So that's u hat. And it's just going to be the distance. y minus y hat. So there's the 0.2 for that first observation. And then all the way down. And there's the set of residuals. So these numbers that we see here are not automatically generated by our regression that we run in Stata, but they're real easy and real important to, to be able to extract. So before we take our next step, let's swap back over into Stata. We're all over the, all over the computer here. And we have this regression kind of in memory. And in Stata, we can use the predict command to create both the y hat and the u hat. So let's create the y hat. So we just go predict y hat. And the default for that predict command after a regression is exactly what we did, the y hat. So we hit enter. And now what we see in our list of variables is a new variable just created, that y hat. And if we browse the data, we see exactly the numbers that we just created. A little bit of rounding error. Uh, we didn't have all, the, uh, all four decimal points there in Excel, but those are going to be exactly the same values that we calculated by hand in Excel. And like I said, we can use the same command, the predict command, to get the residuals, but we use the option residual. So we go predict, we're going to call it u hat, and what you put after, right after predict is your choice. It's whatever we want to name this new variable, but we have to go comma resid to tell Stata that we want to create the u hat rather than the default, which was the y hat. So we go predict u hat resid. We look up and we see a new variable created. That's the u hat. Open up the browser again, bro, and we see this column here. So exactly the numbers that we just generated in Excel. So again, the goal here is to be able to replicate by hand, deconstructed piece by piece, all the things that Stata is doing for us. OK, one more thing before we wrap this up. Um, now that we've got our individual observations errors or residuals, we want to be able to have a kind of an aggregation of how well our model did, right? And we'll continue this discussion next time. But the first place we want to go is the sum of squared residuals, or the residual sum of squares, the RSS, which takes each observations mistake gap, squares it, and then adds it all up. So that summation from i equal 1 to n, think of that in our spreadsheet. That's just the column, right, adding up all of those elements. And of course, as we know, ordinary least squares is built from the ground up to minimize this sum of squared residuals. So we already know this is going to be the best possible outcome that we could get, right, fitting that line using OLS gives us the minimum value here. But seeing a number for that residual sum of squares is going to give us a baseline to compare different options, either 
adding variables or taking variables out, uh, changing the specification in some other way, we'll be able to use this later on. Okay, so let's see how this is calculated and then we'll see where to find it in Stata as well. So in Excel, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. We new, need a new column, call it U hat two, and that's just gonna take every value in the U hat column and take it to the second power. We square it, add them all, or copy that all the way down, and then we already have our sum row here. So we're gonna calculate the sum of all of these numbers and that is this model's RSS, the sum of squared residuals. I didn't do this before, but we should be able to make a prediction here. What's going to happen if I apply that summation to the residuals themselves? It's going to be really, really small. It should technically be zero, right? We should be placing that best fit line such that the positive errors or the negative errors cancel each other out. So that negative 2e to the negative 14, so that's a decimal point, 13 zeros, and then a two, basically zero. That's what you want to see. So that doesn't tell us a lot other than that OLS worked. But that 25.07, again, think of that as a baseline uh, that we can compare other models to. So now if we swap one more time back into Stata and look at that regression result, what you'll see in the upper left corner here is the residual sum of squares which is that value of 25.07 that we just calculated. So again, think of this Stata output, everything that comes out from running regression as our to-do list, right? What we want to eventually be able to do is show exactly how every one of those numbers that we see is calculated, what it means, and what to do with it. So we're off to a pretty good start. We've got the B1 hat, the B0 hat, the sum of squared residuals, and we're just going to keep on going down that road, okay? So we'll see you next time where we look at these other numbers up here, the model sum of squares, the total sum of squares. We'll jump into the R squared and the adjusted R squared, and we're off to the races. So we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.